In the end of 2013, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association released new guidelines for the management of cholesterol-related disorders in patients who have increased risk for cardiovascular disease. In the backdrop of these recommendations, the National Lipid Association has released its own set of recommendations for the management of patients with cardiovascular risk and cholesterol disorders. As with any documents, there are strengths and weaknesses that each of these have. So let's start with the AHA ACC guidelines. They bear the force of a guideline, which is important. Um, and they also bring something which had not been brought before, which is strong, unambiguous support for the use of statins in high dose, particularly in people with primary prevention. They also remember that, that you have to encourage patients to help you. you have to, they, they encourage the patient to partner with you. The NLA recommendations get my immediate positive because they say, as I quote, they, have, they recognize that an elevated level of atherogenic cholesterol is what causes the cardi cardiovascular disease. And knowing this, you immediately go to the notion that lowering this as much as you can is the best thing you can do. The goals of both groups, of course, is to reduce cardiovascular risk by lowering LDL cholesterol. And so, uh, and, and prevention is clearly uh, endorsed as, as a strategy uh, that's crucial uh, for lowering risk. The NLA recommendations are much more individualized, they're more labor intensive. You have to, they're, they're more complicated, but I think for an individual patient, if you have the right doctor who can, who's motivated to do this, is knowledgeable, um, it, it works fine. The other approach, it's just simpler. Many times, just measuring an LDL does not capture all of the risk. And there are other blood tests that can help us in a very large manner to determine who is at risk, and then you focus your therapy. To me, this is a bit more thoughtful. To me, a bit more complicated and, and maybe a little harder to follow, but a bit more thoughtful and allows the dedicated, focused physician to, be, to, give, to give them guidance as to how they might pursue diagnosis and therapy to optimize cardiovascular outcomes. One of the benefits of all of the emphasis on the various guidelines is that it has brought this to the attention of patients who can potentially now have a discussion with their, with their physician as to whether or not their risk is being optimized. It is also important for patients to work on lifestyle modification, and this is something that is a commonality to every set of guidelines and should be emphasized both by physicians and stressed um, on an individual level. I think our knowledge of these recommendations, our understanding of how they apply, allows us to use that information accurately and appropriately for different patients in different scenarios. And I don't think it's a fight, one versus the other. I think it's more how can we look at the commonalities and then there, where there are differences, what can we use and take away from each that works best for that particular patient? And I think that's the key.